Okay, this is chapter 24, cell cycle and mitosis. So we actually start with mitosis, then talk about the regulation of cell cycle. And you should know mitosis from GB1. I have posted a video um, called Bioflix um, in the objectives page that you can watch to review. Um, you should also know the basics of the cell cycle. So G1, S, G2, and M phase. And remember that M phase includes not only mitosis, but cytokinesis, which is technically the division of the cytoplasm. I expect you to be able to recognize different stages of mitosis. I focus on PMAT, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. So for my definitions, if you cannot clearly see the chromosomes, the cell is in interphase, which means it's somewhere here, G1, S, G2. We can't tell. Once you can start to see these little squiggles, which are the chromosomes condensing, now we're in prophase. We do not have enough microscopy uh, um, cell vision techniques to really determine prometaphase from prophase. So when I give you metaphase, the chromosomes are going to be lined up in the middle. So prophase, everything looks like squiggles. Metaphase, you're getting things lined up. Now I know a lot of students say, that doesn't look very lined up to me, trust me. They're all organized here, they're lined up. Anaphase is when they begin to divide. And telophase is when you start to see these new nuclei forming, daughter cells forming. So be able to recognize these different stages of mitosis, including interphase, which is outside of mitosis. The technique that is important for you to understand a little bit is flow cytometry and facts. And this is a really important technique in cell biology because it allows us to take a mixture of cells recognize, determine concentrations or numbers of cells from that mixture that have different characteristics. So what flow cytometry is doing is taking that mixture, shining a laser, and you set these parameters, and it can basically detect basic, sh excuse me, cell shape and size you can also use things like antibodies and fluorescent dyes and have the laser detecting different cells of the immune system, for example, different cells with different markers. Um, one of the ways they used it in this chapter is to look at how much DNA is in a cell to determine how many cells are in G1 phase versus S G2 phase, right? Because they would have one X amount of DNA in G1, and then once you get into S and G2, you have two times because S phase is where the DNA chromosomes are replicated. FACTS allows you to actually sort these cells. So now not only are you collecting characteristic data, but you can sort them based on these characteristics into different tubes. So then you could manipulate cells, say for instance you're studying cells of the immune system, looking at what the macrophages do, or looking at what the neutrophils do, or the cytotoxic T cells do. So really important technique in cell biology. 
the way the data is exposed or expressed, sorry, or presented, a lot of the times is on this graph. And what the graph is basically showing you is you have marker number one and marker number two. And this image just illustrates that they have a marker one that is red and a marker two that is green. And so your data will be expressed in quadrants where this bottom part, the population is negative for both. This quadrant, positive for whatever your first marker is, positive for your second marker, positive for both. So as we get towards the final and we talk more about techniques, I will give you some examples of um, flow cytometry and fax data for you to analyze. Okay. Another concept you should no, but many students confuse this, is the idea of sister versus homologous chromosomes. Hopefully you know that humans have 46 chromosomes in 23 pairs. So you have 23 homologous pairs of chromosomes. That means the one you got from your mom and the one you got from your dad, chromosomes one through 22 and your sex chromosomes have similar types of data, uh, of sorry, of data, of um, gene information or genetic information. So for instance, this might be eye color. Right? And whether you've taken genetics or not, um, you can have two different genes for eye color, one from your mom, one from your dad. So maybe you have brown eye color and, ye and a yellow. Uh, sorry, it's late. Blue eye color, right? And genetics talks about how the phenotypes come from these genotypes. Homologous chromosomes mean that they have the same type of information, but they're not identical, right? One's from your mom, one's from your dad. After replication, which for us is S phase of the cell cycle, you now have sister chromatids. So you still have homologous chromosomes, but now you also have duplicated chromatids. Sister chromatids are identical. So the purple are identical, the green are identical which means if this is the brown eye color, this is also the brown eye color. And if this one is the blue eye color, they both are blue. And so what's important for this is that eventually we will split these sisters so that each new daughter cell has a set of brown and blue and brown and blue. Sister chromatids, you can see, are held together by this little knot, which is called the centromere. Okay, that's why they look like an X, because we're drawing them held together. So let's look at this centromere. So the centromere is made up of a bunch of proteins called the kinetochore. So this is your DNA, so this is your chromosome, and on that chromosome you have centromeric sequences, C-E-N sequences. So your AGCT sequence is very specific, and it binds this C-E-N-P protein and that helps assemble this whole kinetochore protein complex, which we see as a centromere, right? 
So there's this complex on one chromosome and there's a complex on the other sister chromatid. Sorry, sometimes I say chromosome, sometimes I say chromatid. Um, I, I need to be a little bit more careful, but understand that I'm talking about your DNA associated with proteins. So your centromere is really an area. Okay, it's not a specific protein, it's this area that's made up with all these proteins. And what's important is that the microtubules, or what we like to call them as spindle fibers, are attached to the centromere through the kinetochore proteins. And this is what allows the chromosomes to eventually be split in half and put into two new daughter cells. At the other end of the cell is the centrosome. And we've talked about this before. A centrosome is made up of two centrioles. And remember, this is called an MTOC, microtubule organizing center. So again, the centrosome is describing an area, not a specific protein. And within that area, the centrioles are there, made up of microtubules. And then you can see all these microtubules start growing from the centrosome. So during S phase, the centrosomes will duplicate, eventually moving to opposite ends of the cell, and eventually your chromosomes will be lighted up in the middle with the spindle fibers, and as the centrosomes move, you divide your cell. Okay, so before we get there, let's talk about these microtubules. So there are three types of microtubules that are very important in cell division. The kinetochore microtubules are ones that go from the centrosome and connect to that kinetochore. So they are connecting physically to the chromatids. The astral microtubules are actually hooking the centrosome to the plasma membrane. So that's going to be important when we pull these chromatids apart. And there's another type of microtubule, so three types, called the polar microtubules. These actually attach to each other through motor proteins. So they're connected to the centrosome, or from that area. They attach to each other, and they're going to help give us this push as we push the centrosomes apart during cell division. The motor proteins that are involved, right, so we need something to do this pushing and pulling. You again have three types. You have number one, kinesin motor proteins that are actually going to help um, degrade this kinetochore microtubule, right? So you're going to end up shortening this microtubule, which is going to pull the chromosome to the centrosome or to the pole. The kinesins will chew up, well, let's, let's be a little more technical, depolymerize the microtubules. So that's how they're pulling it, is they're making it shorter and shorter. You have motor proteins here called bipolar kinesin. 
and they are between two polar microtubules and they are actually sliding the polar microtubules apart. So you can see the arrows go in both directions. So they actually aid in polymerization. So we want to make the polar microtubules longer so that they're pushing the centrosomes apart. And finally, you have some astral, oops, here, motor proteins down here. And these are dynin. Oops. And they are going to pull on the spindle poles. So as you can see, as they are losing, depolymerizing, right? we're going to keep pulling that centrosome closer and closer to the plasma membrane. So what you have going on is this push-pull of the centrosomes and the chromosomes in order to make the cell eventually be able to undergo cell division. Another important term to understand is congression. And congression is happening at metaphase. And it's really hard to show. Um, there's some really cool videos out there showing chromosomes undergoing mitosis. What I want you to understand is congression is this constant push-pull. And if you watch some of these videos, you can see that the chromosomes are kind of tugged back and forth as they align on that metaphase plate. Mm -hmm. And that's because at the centromere, um, sorry, uh, kinetochore, sorry, at the kinetochore uh, microtubules, you have this constant growth and shrinkage, right? So polymerization, depolymerization. Um, and so you get this little tug of war going back as this shrinks, the um, sister chromatids will move one way and as this is polymerizing, it will push it one way and then it will shrink on this side and polymerize on this side. And so they have this tug of war back and forth until those sisters are all lined up in the metaphase plate. And it's pretty dang cool to watch. You know that the next step after metaphase is anaphase. And our book talks about anaphase A and anaphase B. And the reason we break anaphase up into A and B is just so that you can understand that there are really two sets of movements going on. So anaphase A is pulling the chromosomes to the poles. Anaphase B is pushing the poles away from the, each other. So you're getting this tug, pull, and push again at the same time. The pull-pull separation we talked about is due to these polar microtubules working against each other or, or sliding, I'm sorry, uh, sliding relative to each other and the chromosomes being pulled are the kinetochores and the astral microtubules um, pulling the centrosomes away from each other towards the poles. All right? So, interphase is all about making the cell larger, replicating the chromosomes. Prophase is about condensing the chromosomes so that they don't get all tangled up like a ball of yarn. Metaphase is about lining them up. Anaphase is about breaking these sisters apart. Telophase is about making new nuclei. And abscission is that final separation of the daughter cells. So this is also cytokinesis, where we are splitting the cytoplasm. 
And again, cytoskeleton components are involved. So you have actin and myosin filaments making this contra con blah, contractile ring like a belt, tightening, 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 until the cell eventually splits in two. The other thing that I want you to remember that um, is, is just briefly mentioned in your textbook is that in order to make this membrane that separates the two cells, you have to add lipids. So as you're making what we call a cleavage furrow, right, where you're making this indent, you also have vesicles that are bringing all this new membrane there because there's no membrane right here, right? The cell is big, there's no membrane. So the red staining is for the plasma membrane and this bright green is showing the non-muscle myosin two. Um, and so you can imagine that there's a lot of tracking, uh, trafficking of vesicles to also deposit lipids here so that the cells can eventually divide into two daughter cells. Okay, so that's some of the physical things that happen to the chromosomes and the cells during cell division. Cell cycle is about regulation. So controlling the growth, the DNA synthesis, some more growth, and the final division is all about protein expression. So I'm going to stop here, and we will start again right here for the next video. Ooh.